she left out the part about her acne getting better before quitting veganism, before adding butter and eggs to her diet. Why I'm no longer vegan by Earth Mama Medicine. Not getting a good vibe from this just right off the bat. I just want to say that because I'm really biased against this sort of stuff. Just, I've not had good experiences with more kind of spiritual type people. I'm on a journey. Be open-minded. So I'm already like expecting be open-minded and it's all nuanced and blah, blah, blah. But then at the same time, very authoritarian, like do this, don't do this sort of language when it comes to health and nutrition. Again, that's not really fair. I don't know anything about this person. I don't know anything about this video, but I just want y'all to know that like, that's where I'm coming from. I will try to be unbiased, but it's hard. <laughs> so I just want to invite you to listen with an open ear and an open heart, most of all, and know that the beauty of the human experience is that we are all different and we're all unique. What works for you might not work for the person next to you or the person across the table. Absolutely, there, there are some individual aspects to nutrition, right? I think overwhelmingly for most of us, the, the bare bones basics of nutrition are universal, but certainly there are individual differences and preferences. But yeah, so I'm hearing a lot of, it's different from person to person, but again, I'm expecting some more like don't eat this, do eat this sort of stuff, but we'll see. So yes, I actually did study holistic nutrition at the Institute of Transformational Nutrition. They used to have a holistic nutrition certification and I think they've changed it now to something else. Institute of Transformational Nutrition, the science, psychology, and spirituality of nutrition. Oh, that's a good sign. Become a certified nutrition coach. A registered dietitian can call themselves a health coach or a nutrition coach. A nutrition coach cannot call themselves an RD. There is no type of training, licensure, or certification that protects the title. Anyone can create a diet or nutrition program, call himself or herself a health coach, market the program, coach people through implementation of the program, and do so for compensation. Not saying that's, you know, guarantee that she doesn't know a lot about nutrition, although again, the spirituality thing is, makes me cringe a little bit or a little bit concerned, but I just wanted to be clear that the training she got is not at all similar, not at all as rigorous as what you would get when becoming a dietitian, at least here in the US, right? Now, I think in like the UK, a nutritionist and a dietitian might be the same thing. I can't quite remember, but it's, it's a little bit different there in terms of the actual terms that are used. But here in the States, a nutrition coach could or could not be a dietitian, but certainly the thing she got from that institution, that's that's not what that is. Under physical nutrition, detoxification and cleansing, gut health, leaky gut, and the microbiome. Okay. Even if you want to become a nutrition coach, please do not do it through these people. <laughs> please do not give these people money. And when I studied throughout all of that, I learned all of it. I learned a very unbiased way of information, but then as I was learning, I started to get funneled into that Dr. Sabi alkaline raw food tunnel. Okay, so is she saying through that like institute it led her to that? Then that's really bad. Then yeah, their nutrition information sucks. Please don't lump those two together. It's not like veganism and alkaline and raw foods. No, 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 you can be vegan without any of that garbage. Raw food, raw veganism. And as you saw my channel years ago, I did experience raw veganism for almost a year. I was raw vegan in New York City in the cold, like, ugh. Why was I doing that to myself? Oh, I can't even imagine. I, I was raw for years and I did it when it was like cold, but I was in the South. It didn't get that cold, you know? I can't, oh man, I can't imagine. But also not surprising being into raw foods, at least at some point, right? And then becoming ex vegan. I mean, how many like raw vegans are even left at this point? Two? After about f almost five years of strict veganism, things started to shift for me. I think I was 27 at the 20, 25 at the time. My hormones or my adrenal glands, my stress response, it, something started to switch and I started to get this insane cystic acne all over my face. She starts with the cause of the thing that happened, that it was her adrenal glands or hormones that they switched. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. And then she ended up with cystic acne. So she already supposedly knows the cause of her cystic acne and it's like adrenal fatigue. 
which is not a thing. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's like really open-minded, no absolutes, that kind of stuff. But then also I know exactly what caused my cystic acne. It was adrenal fatigue. <laughs> what? You know what? Now that I'm saying this, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people switched from veganism to something else. And the one marker that helped them learn that there was an imbalance in their body was their skin. Your skin is a map. Your skin shows you what's going on on the inside. Topical things, washes, all that's beautiful. But when you have an imbalance on the outside, target the inside. Look at the liver, look at your thyroid hormone, look at your estrogen dominance and balance. What is your eating? Look at your gut health, get your gut tested. Ugh. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Oh, so much, so much there. She said we're gonna get into gut health in a minute, so I'll I'll wait on that. But just because you have acne doesn't mean there's anything negative going on on the inside. Just because you have something negative going on doesn't mean that it's gonna show up in your skin. Plenty of acne-related problems are simply due to buildup in your pores that can be fixed by maybe using a better cleanser or maybe using some benzoyl peroxide or retinoid. Many, many people have had success with their acne by using topical treatments, not changing their diet or anything like that. Also other kind of, I guess you would describe as topical things like changing their pillowcase every night, using different hair products as well, because sometimes you can get a buildup or, or acne around here, maybe because of some sort of heavy product or something you're putting on your hair. So that's absolutely ridiculous to say that all acne is caused by something internal, like diet or, or something like that. That's not to say that diet can't play a role. It's not super clear. You know, a lot of people say they get rid of, rid of dairy and their acne clears up. The science is kind of like mixed on that. So it's not really clear, but it seems like a lot of people have that experience. So probably worth trying if you consume a lot of dairy to give it up and see. And also for cows, you know, that, that would be nice. Sugar possibly as well, excess calories in general. Unfortunately, there is no easy fix for acne and there are people who have tried seemingly everything and they still have acne. And also cystic acne. There are people who don't have acne at all and then all of a sudden in their like 20s, they get extreme cystic acne. I think I was 27 at the, 20, 25 at the time. I started to panic a bit because never in my life have I had acne, ever. Not at all unheard of. I think that's what happened to Nina and Randa too. They never had acne and then all of a sudden in their 20s, they got it. And they say it's their like super low fat vegan diet. <laughs> that cures it. Remember for every single person saying their particular diet cures a thing, there's always going to be another person saying their totally opposite diet cures that same thing. I am this public figure, Earth Mama Medicine, who's sharing videos about health and nutrition and really preaching to people about what they should be eating and how they should be treating themselves. How in the world is anyone going to trust me, listen to me, believe me, when my face is covered in acne. I just want to say before we go in any further, I know I've been like poking fun and kind of like rolling my eyes and I will continue to do that, I'm sure. But I don't understand from personal experience, but I can, I can still empathize with something like that. And I can understand someone like that going, oh my God, how do I fix that? And probably trying lots of things. I'm guessing that's what she's going to say next. And even giving up veganism and going to animal products. I'm absolutely sympathetic when it comes to any sort of health issue and that leading people to start eating animal products again. But also please don't think that you can't talk about health because you have acne. I mean, it's not surprising she would say something like that because she thinks all acne comes from like diet and shit. But again, that's not true. So please don't feel like you can't talk about health or anything because you have pimples. That's ridiculous. If people tell you that, tell them to fuck off. I had many phases of my healing. One of them was owning it. It was really finding true unconditional love for myself and knowing that this is healing and thanking my body for showing me that there was an imbalance through the acne. Another one was using better skincare products. I, I can talk about in another video, but I think it was way less about the skincare than it was about healing my gut and healing the bacterial imbalances, which therefore healed my hormones. Why though? Why? Like you can't, you can't possibly know. Maybe it was just the skincare. I started going down the rabbit hole, following a bunch of functional medicine doctors, naturopath doctors online, 
going to one in real life. Remember when I got that colonic, I, I was just trying everything. And this is not at all unique to her. This is something that most of us do when we have a problem. We just throw like every possible thing at it, but it's really hard to figure out what's going on and what's actually helping or hindering when you do that, especially when it comes to skincare, you really have to take one step at a time. I kept seeing stuff about women's bodies and the hormones because I knew this was a hormonal acne because it was cystic and because it was in the areas of the face that usually indicate hormonal imbalance. Oh no, face mapping. Line. And those places are along the jawline usually. It can be the sides of the cheeks and the jawline and the chin. In traditional Chinese medicine, you can Google something called face mapping and they'll show you when you're getting pimples in certain areas what that means for inside. And so I can show you pictures, this this acne was hormonal. I'm glad she at least mentioned the origin because yeah, th this has no basis in science. <laughs> this is not evidence-based medicine. If you go to see a dermatologist, they are not going to pull up face mapping for you. This is shit you find on like Pinterest and Instagram. That said, there can be areas that often relate to certain causes, right? Like if you find that you're all of a sudden getting a lot of pimples up here, like I kind of have. Well, I did just cut my hair and I have hair now covering areas that I didn't have before. Maybe there's an excess of buildup because of that, right? So it's it's not uncommon for people to get like build up around here when they get bangs or they're wearing a hat all the time. And again, acne is complex. There's still a lot people who study this for a living don't know, especially when it comes to cause. Some sources say cystic acne that develops in your teens or 20s is hormonal. Others say no, that's not actually the cause. I mean, really all acne is hormonal since sebum production is regulated by hormones like androgens. Although that's not the full story, right? Just because you have sebum production, we all do, doesn't mean you'll have acne. Your propensity for shedding has a lot to do with it too. Point is doctors readily admit they don't know what the fuck is going on with their faces, but Earth mama with a degree in spiritual nutrition says she knows the exact cause of her acne sounds about right actually the female body to my understanding now benefits greatly from animal fats from real fats this helps our hormones our bodies want to feel safe first and foremost so when your body doesn't feel safe it's going to start doing all sorts of things. When you're starving yourself, you're doing these yo-yo diets, you're doing this keto stuff, this intermittent fasting. Remember when I did so much intermittent fasting? It was not helping me. It was backfiring on me 100% because my blood sugar was flip-flopping. My body is going into this emergency mode thinking that it's starving. There's just so much going on. <laughs> so much going on. Okay, so we need animal fats. All right, so she's full on like Lear Keith, Sally, Fannin, Weston A. Bryce, that sort of shit. She knows that intermittent fasting was bad for her. How does she know that? Because her blood sugar was going crazy. Which causes insulin resistance, which means when I do consume food after so many hours of not eating throughout sleep, 12 hours, you know, not eating when I first wake up until noon or something crazy like that, or one o'clock, my body's in emergency mode. My cortisol is straight through the roof, which is their stress hormone. My adrenal glands, which regulate your cortisol, are very stressed out, and they can't process sugar like they're supposed to. My liver's stressed out as well. So your body is essentially in haywire. I can, I can explain this in a nerdier way, but I'm just I'm speaking in layman terms here so that you can just understand what I was beginning to understand. I think this is where individual preferences come into play. Some people find intermittent fasting really helpful, mostly for weight loss, right? Helping them get to and maintain a healthy weight. They just find it a lot easier than calorie counting. They're able to get their calories lower by eating for shorter windows during the day. Intermittent fasting, at least in the past, was more like fasting for one to two days a week. So a full like 24 hour fast. What she's talking about is like 12 hour fast, something like that, which like really isn't that long at all. The idea that your blood sugar and your cortisol levels would go haywire. Look, if you're diabetic, obviously you should not be doing any sort of fasting. But for the average person who doesn't have blood sugar issues, a 12 hour fast is probably not going to be a big deal. A lot of people do that without even knowing they're doing it. There are lots of people who just don't eat at night. You know, they eat dinner around six and that's it. And then they go to bed maybe at like 10 and then get up at eight. That's a 14 hour fast right there. Like it's, it's not a big deal. Again, maybe for her, that's just not how it worked. Maybe she actually tested her like fasting glucose and and everything. I seriously doubt it, but maybe she did and that was her experience. That's fine. Then like don't do intermittent fasting, but that's not the way she's describing it. She's saying like your body. She's saying 
Like this is how it works for everyone. So again, peace and love and nuance and open minds, but also nobody intermittent fast. It's terrible for you. <laughs> and I went to holistic nutrition school, but I'm totally not an expert, you all. I am learning every day something new and there's always going to be contradicting information. I'm not an expert, but also intermittent fasting is terrible for you. Even though if you read like anything from any sort of expert, they will not just say directly that intermittent fasting is terrible. There's like a lot more nuance. So yeah, clearly she, she isn't an expert. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. So the first thing I did was get my gut tested. And after getting my gut tested, I realized, holy moly, this is what's happening. I used a test called Viome, V-I-O-M-E. I wouldn't endorse the brand myself, actually. I've shared about the brand before. Now I probably would say, there are other brands out there that you can use for a gut test, and I actually will be reviewing one coming up soon, so if you wanna wait on that, you can. But I just recommend getting your gut tested because what the test told me was all the great bacteria I had, all of the bad bacteria I had, way more bad bacteria that was feeding off of the sugars and the things I was, I was serving myself. Foods that are your strength foods, foods that are your weakness foods, foods that you should be avoiding. Why did I have a long list of vegetables that I should be avoiding? And why did I have a great list, long, pretty long list, a substantial list of animal foods that I should be integrating for my specific gut bacteria? Cool, so you have a company just promoting animal products. And by company, I mean total scam. Viome claims that with an examination of your microbiome, this information can be used to identify your superfoods, your foods to minimize or enjoy, and what supplements you should take. So this is what, uh, eat mama? No, earth mama. <laughs> this is what earth mama was talking about. If the types of bacteria shown in your test are similar to what is commonly seen in thousands of other people's poo, then congratulations, your poo is just like other people's poo. We have not yet made strong links between the presence or absence of any types of bacteria with many of the big diseases such as cancer, heart disease, or dementia. So don't panic, for instance, if your report says you have low levels of a bacterium associated with preventing type 2 diabetes. We are not at a stage where we can confidently say that we need to increase levels of that bacterium to reduce your risk risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Perhaps not surprisingly, one individual tried Viome and a competitor day two and found the results and recommendations largely contradictory. According to Viome, lentils were a no-no food for this person, but day two said, no, they're a great food actually. <laughs> My purported superfood of cranberry received low marks. Almonds got an almost perfect score while Viome told me to minimize them. So yeah, it's a scam and not just Viome. I'm sure whatever other company she's getting gut health testing from, it's a scam. There is not enough evidence for this shit. Pun intended. So it was telling me that I need to include eggs, that I need to include butter, that I need to include fish and others. So I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? And at that point I was very much so vegan for health, for the environment and for the animals. Like, how could I do this? How could I betray them? How could I, how, 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 how? There's gotta be another way, but I didn't find another way. I just decided to try. So the first day of trying, I think I cooked some food with butter and I felt good. And then the next time I tried, maybe a couple weeks later, Matt and I decided to buy eggs. We were so afraid. <laughs> I'll never forget that day, like being in the store and feeling like I was stealing just by like having eggs in my cart, like is everybody watching me? <laughs> I just want to say to any other non-vegans or ex-vegans watching this or anyone planning on making an ex-vegan video, I don't know, that's like a weird plan to have. Maybe refrain from laughing about starting to buy animal products again. You know, like for a lot of us, for a lot of the people watching her video, I'm sure, because she said she used to make a lot of vegan content, so presumably a lot of the people watching are vegan or vegan curious. It's kind of upsetting, you know, to see people just laughing about buying eggs. Now I'm guessing from her perspective, she no longer agrees with veganism ethically, right? I mean, I don't know. There's still a lot to go in this video, but just giving what she said about how healthy animal fats. So for her, it's funny to think back about like how upset she was about buying eggs because she no longer feels that way, which is sad. And after weeks and weeks of eating butter and eggs, just the butter and eggs, my freaking face started clearing up. I noticed that my stress levels just because I was eating a little bit more balanced. So again, she knows exact cause, just because she was eating a little bit more balanced, all of these things improved. Okay, but you also improved your skincare. She stopped intermittent fasting as well. Like, 
<laughs> you can't make that many changes at once and then say this is the thing that fixed it. I'm not like chastising her for making all of those changes. Again, it's really hard for I think anyone if you're having a problem like that that is so visible and is painful um, to not just throw everything at it at once. I, I totally understand. But please don't then make a video telling people here's the thing I did to fix it. You cannot possibly know that. And that your ultimate point really is that you started eating animal products again? Like that's so crappy. Speaking of crappy, check out this video. I was doing the raw vegan thing. I don't even know how long I was doing it, maybe like six, seven months, something like that. Then I was going to intermittent fasting. I tried the almond raw protocol a little bit where we were fasting most of the day and eating a small window in the day. And then I went back to cooked foods and I think relapsing into cooked foods caused me to eat a lot of vegan junk foods that caused my skin to break out. And then as we continued to live with my mom here in Georgia after van life, the vegan junk food was really out of control. That's when I did the sugar detox that some of you probably remember because I was just eating all the stuff that we couldn't have in the van. And now I am finally coming back to balance. I am now eating what I think for my body is a balanced plant-based diet. This is what's been helping me clear up those crazy pimples I was showing you all in some of our older videos. And here's another one. This one's a month later where she talks about her new skincare routine and again says that her skin is clearing up. None of these are fresh pimples. They're all just um, dark marks left over from the pimples that were there so it's a good sign and I think that is thanks to what I'm gonna show you today along with diet. So not only did she leave out the part about eating a lot of vegan junk food but she left out the part about her acne getting better before quitting veganism before adding butter and eggs to her diet. Was that intentional? Maybe, although it honestly would not surprise me at all if she just doesn't remember. She is so clearly, so fully in on the pro-animal fat narrative. It wouldn't surprise me at all if she just cannot see anything else, right? Other than she had acne on a vegan diet and now she doesn't. If it were intentional, I assume she would have removed these videos, right? I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you do that? It's not like it was hard for me to find this. <laughs> I don't know, regardless, she clearly can't be trusted when it comes to her own acne and health journey. So yeah, she's an unreliable narrator, right? <laughs> so just remember that going forward. And this response ended up being a lot longer than anticipated. So this is the end of part one. I will have part two up in a couple days, unless this is the future, in which case you can go watch part two right now. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone who watched. Thank you so much to patrons over at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. New video soon.